Hi, I'm Charles with Anycat. Previously, Bai was accepted as a disciple to become an immortal. In the immortal realm, Bai would discover that his chosen walk is able to double the power of anything he puts in it. However, he loses some lifespan when he does. Later, Bai is forced to participate in a qualifier for a battle, but finds himself in yet another snake pit. Bai uses his pills on the snakes and ends up using one of the snakes to qualify. The story continues as we see that Bai is the first through the portal to qualify, much to the shock of the chiefs. The other contestants arrive soon after to express their rage that Bai used such an underhanded strategy to get there. Chaos ensues as several snakes surround them but they are taken out, and the other contestants blame Bai. They claim he is the scourge of their sector, but Yuan quiets them down to explain that Bai is officially the first place finisher of the Southern Bank's chosen qualifying battle. The top 10 finishers will represent the Southern Bank in the battle of the Northern and Southern Bank's chosen. The top 5 from that battle will enter the Secret Realm to meditate and increase their cultivation level to prepare for the battle at the Foundation Establishment Sacred Lands. Bai has no clue about the Sacred Lands, but Tianyu explains that he doesn't need to know anything, since he probably won't even survive the Battle of the Chosen. He is then told that the fighters of the Northern Bank focus on the control of ferocious beasts, and every one of them is savage and ruthless. The Battle of the Chosen is very dangerous and some deaths will be unavoidable. Bai says that he needs to hurry and cultivate, but we see that he is really just packing his things. Bai states that he was lucky enough to survive the Lucian incident, but there's no way that he's going to participate in the craziness up ahead. Lee stops him before he can escape, and Bai frantically apologizes for trying to run away. Lee then takes him to where he first accepted Bai as his disciple. He reminds Bai that he told him to make sure to live up to his own aspirations, and Bai said that he would prove himself worthy of Lee's training. Lee then reveals that once someone achieves Mortal Vein Foundation Establishment, they will never have the chance to cultivate a golden core and attain immortality. Bai questions what he has been doing with the past 5 years of his life, since his current goal would have led to him forfeiting his path to immortality. Lee then explains that the Foundation Establishment Sacred Lands open only once every 60 years, and the Battle of the North and South will decide who is qualified to enter. In the Sacred Land, Bai will have the chance to achieve earthly or even heavenly foundation establishment. This is the path to immortality that Bai is looking for, and Lee asks if that is something Bai really wants to run from. Later, Bai and Bao go to spy on the Northern Bank where the Four Great Chosen reside. Bao explains that they consist of a brother and sister duo, Yun who excels in the way of poison insects and his sister Wan, who is an expert in illusionary techniques. Then there is Bei Han Li, whose controlled war beast is a Night Stalker. Finally, there is the man that has lived in seclusion on the mountain peak for years. He excels in the ghost arts and has cultivated one of the most difficult secret techniques of the spirit sector. He is the top chosen of the northern bank, Guya. Bai is certain that he would lose to every one of them, just as Yun spots him. Yun sees that they just managed to escape and Bai is amazed to have seen Yun's power. Bai refuses to keep running though and goes back to continue spying. He finds Wen practicing what he thinks is a secret technique and states out loud that he must make sure no one sees him watching her. However, he is shocked to find that the undead rabbit is there to hear him, and it mimics what he said. Just then, Wan finds him and chases him down to the forbidden land where Bai's sword cannot fly. Elsewhere, leaders of the Northern Bank discuss how they have never lost because they control beasts. However, they are concerned since the most powerful beasts have not reproduced in some time. However, they are concerned since the most powerful beasts have not reproduced in some time. Furthermore, the beast in the abyss has not been active in several thousand years because it has been drained of its life source, and the other divine beasts are approaching the end of their lifespans. Back to Bai, we see that he wanders a cave and assumes there must be something dangerous down there since the girl didn't follow him. Just then, Bai is grabbed by something with immense spiritual power, and he is shocked to see that it is a dragon. Bai instantly apologizes to the great dragon and offers all his assets if it lets him go. The dragon doesn't want any of it, but does try one of Bai's pills. The dragon is intrigued and Bai offers to make a pill 1000 times better, in exchange for his freedom. The dragon accepts the offer, but warns that if Bai fails to make one, then he will have to stay there forever. Bai simply states that all he needs are some dragon bone, dragon muscle, dragon horn, dragon scales, dragon teeth. Before Bai can finish his list, the dragon becomes enraged, so Bai just states that he can make one with just dragon blood. Bai begins refining the pill but laments how little dragon blood he was given. He then gives the dragon the so-called dream pill which is 1000 times more potent than the last. The dragon seems pleased with the results as Bai is taken away somewhere by the dragon. He would then wake up to be told that he was unconscious for quite some time, and that if he slept for any longer he would have missed tomorrow's battle of the chosen. 
The next day, the Southern and Northern Banks talk trash to each other as the Northern Bank explains that the Southern has been losing for the past thousand years. The battle is about to begin and the Chosen of both sides are revealed. The Elders of both sides will supervise and it is explained that since the North won the last battle, they are allowed to have 12 participants, while the South can only have 10. Fighters on either side can freely issue challenges and any refusal to fight will be considered a forfeit. Just then, a cloud forms over the stage and everyone tenses up as they see that it is the top chosen of the Northern Bank, Guya. The battle begins and the platform is raised as Tian Yu steps up to arrogantly challenge anyone that wants to fight him. Someone steps up to fight him and the Elders of the North discuss Spy's reputation as an honored disciple. He is also known for creating chaos but is now nowhere to be found. We then see that he is still back at home as he states that it's better to be fully prepared than to be on time. Back at the battle, Tian Yu is completely exhausted but victorious. The northern participants don't understand why anyone is celebrating though, as Tian Yu barely won against their 6th ranker. They confidently state that Guyu will probably come in first once again, but Tian Li hears and decides to challenge him. Of course Guyu accepts and Tian Li states how beating Guya will make him the first place participant. Just then, Bai approaches, thinking about how everyone will applaud his entrance, but he is struck by Tian Li's lightning. Bai lands on Tian Li, so the two bicker, and Guya offers to fight them both now to save some time. Wen is shocked to see Bai is still alive as he backs away from the fight, and Mai explains that his friends are there to cheer him on. Just then, the fight begins and the elders point out how even the fighters are. The two demonstrate their immense capabilities as Bai watches in amazement. Tian Li is eventually pushed back though, and Guya uses this moment to show everyone his ferocious power. Tian Li thinks it's only a trick, but Guya is insulted by Tian Li's aggressiveness, and the Elder instantly realizes that what is about to happen is very dangerous. Guya begins his frightening attack called the Nocturnal Ghost, but Tian Li is shocked to see that he is still alive and Su has stopped the attack. She is disappointed to see someone as gifted as Guya be so malicious, but Guya explains that he had no intention of injuring Tian Li. The Elder is in awe at how even Chief Su wasn't able to destroy Guya's ghost hand with one attack. He fears that no other secret technique can compare to Guya's nocturnal ghost, but Lee reveals that there is one that can. Bao is familiar with it as well and tells Bai that it is a technique called the Wetland Kingdom. It is the highest of the 10 main secret techniques, and the Northern Bank has always been in possession of it. The remarkable power requires studying the 100 beasts to materialize one's innate spirit. Cultivators differ in their natures and understanding of spiritual beasts, so the strength of their inner spirit are also greatly different. The only problem is that no one has successfully cultivated it in a thousand years. Just then, Bai is challenged to the next fight and he gives his opponent a chance to admit defeat before they start. Han Li is insulted by Bai's arrogance and calls upon his Night Stalker beast. Bai marvels at the beast but Han Li wastes no time in commanding it to devour him. Bai runs for his life as the other participants lament how he was allowed to join the battle. Bai is toyed with by the beast but luckily he has brought his trusty protective talisman. They fail him though and Bai is forced to use one of his refined pills. Everyone is shocked to see that the beast has become an obedient pet and Bai can't believe that it wants more of the treat. Bai gets it to do tricks and the elders of the northern bank are stunned at how he was able to tame the night stalker beast. Han Li gets it back but is furious to see his war beast influenced by some evil technique. He continues his attempts at getting the beast to fight but the animal struggles to reject Bai's offer of unlimited treats. Han Li becomes exhausted and wonders just how many pills Bai has, but is warned to pay attention to his surroundings. It's too late though, as Bai detonates the pills around the arena, causing the Night Stalker to go after Han Li. Members of the Northern Bank can't believe that Bai has won using such an underhanded technique, and the crowd's reaction is split between cheers and calls to have him beat up. Just then, Bai is startled as one of the Northern Bank's elders descends from the tower to attack him, but is relieved when Li stops the elder. The Elder hates the twisted method Bai used to win, but Lee points out how there are no rules against it, especially since Bai refined the pills himself. Tensions begin to rise, but everyone stops when birds fill the sky, and we see that the dragon has opened its eyes. The crowd can't understand what the birds are doing, but Yuan realizes that the fight has unexpectedly startled the one in the abyss. The Northern Elder blames Bai, but another Northern Elder frantically asks Bai if he is the one that refines elixirs that make war beasts go crazy. She demands to know if Bai was the one that created the formula, and he admits to it. The northern crowd laughs as they anticipate Bai will be severely punished, but the elder reveals that she actually has a request for him. 
Afterwards, a meeting is held where the Elder asks that Bai give them the formula. He is a bit hesitant, but Yuan explains that the decision is completely Bai's to make. Bai gains some confidence and states that as an honored disciple, he is duty-bound to give the recipe. Much to the Northern Elder's delight, Bai begins to list all the ingredients, but stops at the last one and sadly states that it was just at the tip of his tongue. The male Elder is furious as he can tell Bai is being crafty, but the female Elder explains that she is willing to give Bai something. It's a box containing an elemental magnetic pearl that can affect the operation of artifacts within a certain range. Bai isn't impressed at all, so she offers to give him magnetic wings that will allow him to fly at a speed not even Foundation Establishment cultivators can keep up with. Lin interrupts to explain that apothecary masters like themselves know how precious formulas are and won't give them up so easily. They are curious as to what else it will take, and Lee shocks them when he recommends they offer the Northern Bank's precious wetland kingdom. The elders are furious as it is the highest of the 10 main secret techniques. Lee points out how good of a deal it is, since they will be exchanging a secret technique that no one can cultivate for a formula that will help them regain control of their thousands of precious spirit beasts. The female elder accepts the trade and must explain to the other elder that while the secret technique is undoubtedly precious, the war beasts are the foundation of the northern bank. Almost all of the divine beasts are nearing the end of their lifespan, and none have any descendants. Bai's profound dream pill can help them avoid the crisis of survival, so she will gladly give him the technique. The exchange is finalized and Bai promises to do his best cultivating the technique. Bao searches for Bai to congratulate him on earning the technique but we see that Bai is busy descending a mountain. A brief flashback shows that Lee told Bai that the technique requires the study of the hundred beasts to materialize the innate spirit. Bai studied what he was given but saw that there was only a map. Bai recognizes the place on the map though and heads to the abyss to confirm. There, the map interacts with the walls of the abyss. Elsewhere, Yuan plays go with Lee and explains that in the entire history of the spirit sector, only Patriarch Tian Yi was able to get a Skywing Beast from the Wetland Technique, and it gave him widespread supremacy. No other practitioner could materialize the innate spirit at all, so he wonders why Li insisted on having the Wetland Kingdom. Li then shocks Yuan when he reveals that Bai was able to enter the Outer Sea Realm when he cultivated the Dragon Elephant Sea Transformation. This has never happened before, and Lee points out how this means Bai has already comprehended the Wetland Kingdom power system. Back in the Abyss, Bai realizes that the two techniques he has been cultivating are interacting, and watches as the two powers fuse into one. He ends up back in the Abyss, where the dragon points out how courageous Bai is. It states that it has been a long while since he has met such an interesting kid, and offers Bai its help. At the Northern Bank, Yun prepares to go up against Bai, as they are both participants in the match to finalize the top 5. Yun is fearless as long as he has his spirit beasts, but finds that he isn't able to summon them. He isn't the only one as everyone around town points out how all the birds are flying away and all the war beasts have gone missing. In the Abyss, Bai wonders why he is being tortured as he is reunited with the evolved spirit-tailed chicken. The dragon tells Bai to think about the point of the Wetland Kingdom, and Bai remembers that it is to realize the innate spirit. The form and strength of the innate spirit he will receive is completely determined by his nature and his understanding of beasts. Bai wants to achieve the greatest innate spirit so he works hard to study the bird in front of him. The next beast is the Night Stalker and Bai examines it well. Several beasts would then be brought in front of him to be studied and Bai is relieved to finally see a cute one. Bai is even amazed to see Yun's beasts there. Back at the stage, the other participants continue fighting each other, and we see that the final match is between Yun and Bai. As always, Bai is nowhere to be found, and Wan assumes he ran from fear. Yun wants them to declare him a forfeit, but Bai arrives to explain that the main star can't avoid being late, but he will never be absent. Yun is surprised to see that Bai actually showed up, and explains that he isn't afraid of Bai's strange pills. Yun calls upon his spirit beast, but everyone except for Bai is shocked to see nothing happen. However, they come out when Bai calls for them, and Bai sheepishly asks if Yun would like to know what's going on. Bai uses the beast to spell the word genius, and shocks everyone with his supreme control over them. He points out he doesn't need the pills to win, and asks that Yun admit defeat since he has no beasts. Bai explains that all he did to control them was a bit of studying, and commands the beast to attack. Yun can't believe that his precious beasts have been turned against him, just as Bai has announced the winner of the battle, and one of the top 5 chosen. Thanks for watching part 8, 5,000 likes and I'll know you want a part 9. Also, all other parts are in a link comment below.